What is up, everyone? Welcome to the latest episode of Power Spike, where myself, Dom, and Monty are breaking down the world of LOL Esports. Uh, it's it's kind of put up or shut up time for LCS. It's time to start making moves in LPL and LCK. And in the LEC, a couple of big changes before the season even starts in the spring. Monty, how's it going, man? Uh, good. I, you know, I'm laughing because you look really tired because it's 6 a.m. your time. And I, I'm laughing because I'm in your position whenever I do the four horsemen where I'm the one who has to do the show who stuck that starts at 6 a.m. <laughs> and it fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. The, so what I've learned, what I've learned and in, in like the comments were just crushing me. They're like, damn, d <laughs> definitely been hitting the freeze pipe. I'm not. It's just... <laughs> This damn Dom. time to do this is like, I've struggled, Dom. I've tried staying up the whole night into it today. I tried to sleep and then wake up. And it just, it's tough. I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> yeah. That's why know. he's going I'm... to Germany, so he doesn't have to suffer anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm so used to it, though. Like, I can just do it um, on end. I think for me, I just, I've always been like, more of a morning person anyway so it's not that bad waking up at like three like i could wake up like for example i could wake up at five every day and be fine like five is fine three is hard but in summer when it's four it's actually not that bad for me like i four is just a little bit earlier than i would like wake up if i was like really fucking if i was try harding life if i was like i want to have like the most optimized life possible waking up at five is like pretty much uh what, what i'm what i'm good with so i think it just depends on how you are as a person yeah i mean I think most of the time you're able to wake up and function, but uh, to wake up, be on camera and do it, definitely yeah. difficult. So hopefully you That's all at home are appreciative <laughs> of us. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's one I mean, thing to wake up. It's another thing to like turn on all the lights in your face and like have to be entertaining <laughs> immediately. That's, That's the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the easiest. But, you know, what has been pretty entertaining has been the unprecedented rookie over in the LPL, uh, Milky Way, shattering records. Dom, uh, this kid has been so dang dominant. You've called it out, and now it's starting to gain a lot larger attention given the fact that uh, it, it, he's doing things that just haven't been done before. Yeah, so this guy is one of the most like freak junglers that we've seen. He just popped up out of nowhere. He didn't even start in the first series for FPX. So when they, when people give you that stat that's been repeated a bunch of times where in 10 series, he has uh, like over a hundred kills. That was actually with him not playing in the first, like he played a partial series in the first series. So he didn't even play a full series um, there as well. And at the beginning of the year, you know, he was just playing like Maokai and things like that. And very quickly, they realized that the way that this team has an angle to win, one of the things I like about LPL is that they play into the strengths of the team. And the strength of this team is that Milky Way can play carry junglers better than pretty much everyone else in LPL right now, which is crazy considering that like Shun is in the league and, you know, he's always been like that kindred guy, Leanne is in the league um, as well. But pretty much they've, everyone has like got in line. Duck Dom is on Senna duty every single time it's up life you're playing maokai you're playing nautilus you're playing some type of like tanky engage if this type of stuff is not up we are playing ash we're playing supportive champions and we are playing around our hyper carry jungler and yeah milky way just carries like every game and even the games that he's carrying are are hard games for his champion like he is getting kindred now four games in a row but he but the reason why he's getting that is because you don't feel like you can ban this guy out this guy had a beast diana game earlier like he can play everything in the jungle right now He's played Viego, like he can play all the carry junglers um, in the jungle right now. So it feels like the best way to attack this team is to try to ban out his teammates, ban out the utility and make Duck Dom play something where he actually needs to play the game. Um, because, you know, you saw his Ezreal. And the thing that's so impressive about Milky Way is that he's winning games while, while his teammates are actively trying to lose the game. <laughs> like that's 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 how you know that this guy is a fucking beast. Like his Duck Dom wants to lose, and Milky Way is like, no, I'm gonna win anyway. So it's pretty sometimes, impressive. Sometimes Duck Dom plays fasting Senna and walks into top lane and helps out top lane and and ganks with Senna. That that happens. And then sometimes yep. he just runs it down on Twisted Fate, and somehow they win anyway. So he runs it down on Ezreal, just shifts into the whole enemy team and just dies. It's like, like it literally just looks like a borderline win trade. Watching this Dom, guy play. Dom, the FPX run 
would be much less entertaining if Duck Dumb wasn't playing this way because it makes it so improbable that in one fucking week that they were able to beat the following three teams. Top Esports, NIP, and Weibo. All in the same week. And their next match is, again, is coming up this week. They have one match this week against uh, BLG. And then their next match after that is JDG. So, like, they actually could go on a fucking historic run if they manage to, like, 5-0 these teams. That is, I don't think it's going to happen. But I also didn't think they were going to get this far. So who the fuck knows now? Yeah, I, even then, like, a 3-2 a against those types of teams seems surprising surprising and, and, sure, and something yeah. uh, uh, i guess that you're willing to hang your hat on given the fact yeah. that an ip was you called it dom like yes they had an easier strength of schedule but you know is still playing those top teams back to back to back with prep with whatnot can you give us an example of for both of you uh what this performance can be contextualized as in the history of lolly sports what's another player that has had to I guess that kind of hard carry performance so early on in their career. I mean, Faker, I mean, obviously. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> we're comparing Milky Way to Faker. You asked, you asked, like literally, like right from the start, Faker was incredibly good. Like he was incredibly yep. good from his first game and incredibly versatile. And he was dominating other mid laners who were considered the best in the world right, you know, right away. And he didn't win in his first split. Like he didn't, he took what he was in third, fourth place, uh, yep. but he did make top four and then he won in his second split, which was 2013 summer. So yeah, I, I, I'm not saying, but you asked like which players were this dominant right out the gate as a rookie. And like Faker's the obvious one that comes to mind. It was, it was exceptional. And this is really impressive. And like it, it, Milky Way has won rookie of the week every single week of LPL so far. And he was the best player of the week this last week for that 3-0 performance. It is yeah. bonkers what he's doing. And not only that, but I'm just going to put this out there as, as points in Milky Way's favor. Faker fucking plays mid lane, okay? It's a lot easier to hard carry from the mid lane than it is from the jungle because you have more money, more levels, more focus in the center of the map to do it. And the era in which Faker played, it was also much easier to dominate from the mid lane because there were items like Deathfire Grasp and support and jungle had no items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so not only is jungle jungle is weak right now like if you watch like for example like i watched lck today what is the jungle meta it's like first picks of juani bro both teams are fighting over the first picks of juani and then like peanuts like oh i can answer this juani maybe i can squeeze the zach game in like this is the fucking th this is the meta that we're in we're in a sejuani rel maokai vi zin Zhao. like you get two items and then that's it and then you stop fucking farming if you watched the dom one versus kt series Lucid was like, at 45 minutes, the Poppy had two items. Because you do not care about your jungler having any type of gold at all. You put him on a champion that's going to be useful with low amounts of gold, and you just fucking stick them there and just be like, all right, just play the team fights, just do what the team needs. L Lucid bought like 45 pink wards in a game or some bullshit. Like, it was just <laughs> actu actually absurd to look at how many pink wards this guy was buying, because like, you just don't, like, no one plays around their jungler anymore. So FBX, like, there's there's a good part of it, too. Because the team yeah. was projected to be so bad, they're leaning into whatever style works. Like, even if playing around jungle is not an optimal style, like, you don't have options right now. You're not going to be playing around Duck Dom. Care is not some beast mid laner. He's playing okay. He's, he's all right. He's doing his job. But his job is to make sure that Milky Way gets strong every single game. The whole team's ah, job so is to play around he's Milky the, Way. He's the Bengi in this situation. They've reversed yes. roles. <laughs> yes, they, they've reversed roles. Yeah. <laughs> the other person that people will instantly talk about when they talk about rookies performing is going to be Bo on FPX. Because he came into FPX. He was a rookie. He 10 owed He won every single game that he played. And he looked like a fucking monster. The difference is that was a star studded FPX roster. That was not this FPX. Like this is a, an FPX that is currently in fourth place. And not only are they in fourth place, they look like the fourth best team. Like they beat the other teams that should yes. be competing for that fourth place spot. Like they beat NIP who was ahead of them in the standings. NIP was seven one. They beat Weibo who people thought was going to be a good team. They beat top esports, even though that one's a little bit fraudulent, but they just look they beat LNG in like a pretty legitimate matter. They just look like they are the fourth best team in LPL right now. And they were actually supposed to be a 15th place team. Whereas Bo was playing 
with Nuggery, with like fucking Doon B when the split afterwards, he's winning MVP. This is like still what I would consider prime Doon B when he's one of the best mid laners in, in all of LPL. Like LWX was not as fraudulent as he is right now. That team actually was good. That was a, that was a crisp LWX, like Doon B, Nuggery lineup. This is a lineup that should not make playoffs. They should win like three series over the course of the entire LPL split. They're already at seven after the first 10 series. And it's like all because of this guy. And they've also got most of the hard teams already behind them. And they will definitely have all of the hard teams basically behind them by the time they finish the next couple of matches that they play. So. Yeah. I mean, their favorites I mean, versus IG. Like IG is is not a good team. Their favorites versus IG, no matter what happens in the next few series, their favorites versus IG. Uh, RNG, RNG and RNG. Thunder, Thunder Talk. Yeah. Yeah. Thunder Talk. I mean, with their schedule, they should be hitting 11 wins. Like 11 wins is really fucking good in LPL. 11 wins normally means that you're at least fifth, sixth, like at minimum, you're fifth, sixth. Sometimes you can even be top four with 11 wins and top four in LPL means that you skip the first two rounds of playoffs, which is huge. Yeah. The, the LPL gauntlet uh, might be bypassed here. I, I, I just keep thinking one T1 fans are in shambles that you just compared <laughs> Milky Way to Faker. But then, well, too, you uh, asked me to compare it to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I look, if, I, I, I'm not, I'm, how, I'm like, not, I'm not projecting, you know, the confidence that Milky Way is going to have a faker esque career and dominate League of Legends sure, and become the sure. most famous player in the world over the next 10 years. But as far, there have not been very many players who show up as rookies and who do this, is what I'm saying. Does it continue? I don't fucking know. Is it reminiscent of Faker's debut? It is. I, I also, I, I love Dom's point on contextualizing why, both in terms of historical uh, uh, FPX teams, and I guess just examples from the past where it's not star-studded, uh, and how this specific F F FPX team is playing strategically towards it, because I think a player that can slot into a high pressure high profile kind of role and find success that we almost took it for granted and i still think are and he's still in there well i guess he's not in his first season anymore but um was pays right pays came on in to a gen g roster that roster obviously very very studded you're playing with chovy you have less to worry about there however we don't bat an eye of that he just replaced the one of the greatest 80 carries in LCK history and it was plug and play. Let's go win some championships. So I, I will say about the, the pays move, like, yes, obviously he won the title in his first split and he had a very impressive performance, but it did take a while for him to get up to speed. And he was getting kind of stupidly dove under tower and he was overextending quite a bit. And also we have to remember that he was, you know, he's an 80 carry and his job was to get, microed by peanut right and even then he was still making some macro mistakes which were hampering gen g but the core of that team especially in their macro play and their identity was so strong that all he had to do was slot in and he still wasn't as good as ruler i think what's impressive about milky way is like he's the he's the center of this team and he can't not shot call as a jungler especially in the early game so as a rookie he is displaying a, a I mean, pretty impressive macro sense. You look at his, his, his gameplay and there's no way that anyone else could be calling the things that he's doing. Like he's literally hopping a wall yeah. when they're doomed, when they're in a game that is like a hundred percent lost, he's hopping a wall and like one shotting the Azir. There's no way that like duck Dom <laughs> sitting there and just like saying in Chinese real quick. Uh, yeah. Like just go one V one the Azir real quick so that we can win the five, four V five afterwards. <laughs> like no one is fucking shot calling this shit for him. Like he just has that game sense where when he gets strong, he knows how to carry the fucking game. So, um, yeah, I mean, the team's playing around him, but you got to remember, like, this FPX roster last year had the same solo laners. They had the same solo laners. This was a a uh, a, a care team last year. Like, this this team had um, Jalahu top lane as well last year. They won 10 series over the course of the entire year in <laughs> LPL last year. They still have six series to go in spring split. They already have seven wins. It's not Duck Dom and Life that came in and started carrying this team. <laughs> this is literally just all Milky Way just being a fucking beast.
That's all it is. How how do you feel about life uh, just existing to troll Viper and then now existing to troll Milky Way? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like I've always been, I've kind of liked life as a player. I, I really liked his debut on Gen G when he was playing like the set support and stuff. Or not, I guess not de uh, debut, but like when he was playing set right. support and all these engage champions, like he always was somebody who was good at finding engage angles. The problem was, Engage hasn't been meta for a long time. So like he was playing fucking Lulu and stuff for Viper. It was horrible. But his his Maokai engages are actually pretty legit a lot of the time because he will actually set up angles for Maokai ult that really benefits Milky Way's ability to carry. I I like I I we have a laugh about life, but I actually have been impressed with some of his uh some of his team fighting and some of the setups he's had on picks. I think he's the like, better part of the ball when lane. When he's out of lane and he's setting up Milky Way, I think he's been pretty good. What a reversal. What a uh, reputation reversal here for life. I just remember us constantly, <laughs> constantly begging for anyone else for Viper, Hanwa Viper Esports, because it was just so crazy uh, how much yeah. that wasn't a fit. But now just put him with Dokdam, and now <laughs> Dokdam's just uh, the punchline no, to leaves, Milky Way uh, being the great the joke. Lane. That so here's, here are the things he does. He either farms himself and gets strong, and Dokdam, like, walks into top lane as Senna and ganks. Uh, or, you know, he just leaves lane and then Duck Dumb just has to farm under turret and he just walks around with Milky Way getting kills. So <laughs> awesome. that's what's funny about this team is that nobody, there's like one person in that bot lane at all times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I, I just last point here. I love your example of saying that for Pays, Peanut was controlling Pays because we already made the meme that it's Chovy in Krang controlling <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, that's how it was. Now, now Gen G has been unleashed with shot caller Chovy and the hens. That's what's going on over there now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is true that peanut was hands down, uh, you know, controlling that team. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, they're just look, I love, I love FBX. This team is super fun to watch right now outside of his Milky Way's play, which is, wonderful i think what's so funny about this team though is it just feels like they have plot armor because every time you think they're going to lose they just don't lose and it's almost like they can mind control the enemy team um into not defending split pushes properly or like doing objectives where their base is destroyed so it's really funny because sometimes it's like milky way hard carrying and sometimes it's just the other team basically refusing to win uh, which is weird to watch, <laughs> but yeah. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for the the plot armor experience. If this team can keep winning in the most improbable fashions, it is delightfully entertaining. Well, yeah. that that plot armor, as as we said, is going to be challenged here in the next three games: BLG, JDG, and then IG. Which you know, highly, I guess, uh, high high ranking, but IG showing some cracks in the armor. We'll see. Um, what happens here for our friends at home call to action time as we do what is your most memorable rookie experience that can be uh compared to as milky way uh let us know in the comments below over at our youtube channel and while you're there give us a subscribe and like the video to help us out uh with the uh all-knowing algorithm of uh, youtube and of course all the platforms that we have uh here for last free nation um next up we go from uh, kind of like unbelievable in the good way to unbelievable in the other way. It's time for Everything's on Fire. And uh, there's a little team in Europe making some, some changes that maybe you have heard of that leaked out. Maybe you got a little XD out of it from Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's right. Los Heretics have made the change in the mid lane and support. I mean, support was kind of, you know, it might have been coming. But uh, Perks Bench for the rookie, as well as Kaiser out as well for Trimby. So Heretics have made some changes. They made a video, and now everything is on fire. Uh, Tom, I'm going to go with you to you here first. Uh, Perks being benched. Uh, the Heretics released a video statement probably just, just a little while ago 
um, before we shot our uh, or before we're shooting this episode now saying they originally made a move away from Kaiser to Trimby for the winter split. They did a little bit of scrims. Things got worse. And then they had more one on one conversations and decided uh, to remove perks and put in the young rookie. Uh, I, I couldn't fully say it. Uh, Zairu, uh, <laughs> Polish mid laner from the Heretics um, uh, Jungle uh, Academy. Uh, sounds Zero? a lot like. <laughs> yeah, 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 they just said it so quickly. Zaru, Zai is sounding a lot like the the what's the Counter Strike player's name? Zaiwu, 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 or Zwu. There's an yeah. R in here. Yeah, uh, Zwu. But what do you what do you make of this move? Both moves here and kind of like the the reasoning behind it, the process behind it here by the Heretics management, uh, Dom. Well, I mean, they're obviously lying. So I'm going to start with that. Like, 100% they're lying because it, they didn't make the move because they believe in, in Zwyru. Like, if you look at how they've treated him, like, since he's been on their academy organization, he won EU Masters and he beat Ruby while he was winning EU Masters. He completely, like, ran the fucking tournament and he didn't get promoted to LEC. Like, they didn't believe in him when he was actually beating Ruby. They took the guy that he beat the shit out of over him in Heretics originally then when Ruby wasn't working out, they didn't go to him. They went to Vedio. And then when they moved on from Vedio, they went to Perks. So there's literally three different opportunities for them to, to put Zwyru in. And they didn't take any of them um, until now, which is like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, even now they, they let Perks play a split before they, they even made this change. So it's not something that had to do with, with, um, with them really believing in their academy mid laner. And then when you look at, at the uh, team itself and you look at the reports that came out, this was a change that was done supposedly after an argument. And in the response video or like whatever this was, I don't even know what the fuck to call this video. It looked, it looked like they were, it looked like they were literally hostages and they was like, it a did, they, looked, they looked like pained. They looked pained <laughs> as they were saying the decisions they made. Yeah, it's super weird. It's super weird. Like normally you'd like share decisions, but they're looking like somebody died. Like somebody died. Like I don't know if they had just like killed perks right before they 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 made this this video or what was going on, but they looked somber in it. Um, so it was it was very strange to see just the vibe of the video uh, just in general. It's like they're looking down. They're not really looking at the camera. It just felt like they were lying um the entire time. And obviously. They didn't explicitly say that it wasn't because of this debate because they want to like have plausible deniability. So they're just like, they're like, yeah. And you know, people have been talking about the argument that happened, the the famous argument, and then they immediately just cut over to, and we believe in Zwyru. It's like, wait, you didn't address what you were just saying. Like, so was there an argument or was there not an argument? Was there an argument that led to Berg's getting benched, which was was what the report was, right? Like this came out in a report. So if it wasn't true, you would say it, right? You'd be like, this did not happen. This argument that led to the benching did not happen. They, of course, don't explicitly say that. So, I mean, it's just it's just all bullshit. They're just trying to make it seem like, oh, they really believe in this guy. They've proven that they don't believe in this guy um, with their actions over the last year and a half. Monty, I mean, what are was... your uh, quick takes on here? Or I guess early takes on this move. <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, I think it's funny that uh, we have a segment called Everything is on Fire and it's Team Heretics, because obviously that's mm -hmm. typically what you do with heretics is you light them on fire historically, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy I enjoy that uh, <laughs> as a complete aside. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's pretty outrageous what's going on, um, not, not because... Perks doesn't deserve to be benched, but it is interesting that they chose to give up VTO despite the success that they had with that player towards the end of the 2023 season, you know, in spite of other issues on their roster that they later addressed, like Evie's not on this team anymore. And they went out and they got wonder and it, you know, it's weird that they would get rid of this player who has been in you know, pretty good form over the last few years did actually win an MVP as well. And perks, I think the, the vitality super team was a failure, not always entirely his fault. But I think that if you just look at his play this, this year so far, you would say that it's been pretty bad. And 
it's unfortunate to say that given the his, his history and his career, but there's no other way to look at it. And he should probably be benched purely for performance issues. And I'm not entirely sure why they can't just say that, you know, I, I think because it's completely that was the, the truth. That's why. <laughs> I, but I think it's, that's a very palatable reason to do it. And potentially it could be just to motivate him back into some kind of form, but I don't see what they have really to lose by putting in this tier two player at this point in time, because it's hard to believe that it's going to be that much worse than the performance perks was consistently putting out. I mean, it was bad. What do you make of the Kaiser Trimby move as well? I, I think that one's a little bit weird because other teams could have used Trimby more like, Carmine Corp, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Kaiser was good. And like, I think if you look at the whole of LEC winter, you would probably say that the bot lane was the best part about heretics because even by the end, Yankos and wonder by the time they got into the best of threes were not performing particularly well. Um, so Overall, I would say that I, I don't think the bot lane was the issue. And so bringing in Trimby, it might help a little, but I don't think it helps as much as replacing mid lane, right? I'm, I'm much more comfortable giving Yankos particularly another shot at this, even though some of his games in the best of threes were not very good because at least I got to see him be extremely good last year on a bad team. And so I like to think that he still has it in him, right? So I, I think the the thing that's perplexing to me is a lot of, in this video, a lot of it, as as you were touching on, Dom, it, it, it talks about the intangibles that weren't going down through the team, whether it was good leadership or good good habits. Uh, and, and, and the fact that this was one move with Kaiser and Trimby, and then they scrimmed, and then another move. Like, that just... Feels weird. Peter Dunn, who's always been out front and outspoken and talking about things. One, not in the video. And two, like, has taken Which like very a weird by the way. like kind of fallen back. So what was that? Well, it, one of the things you hire Peter Dunn for is roster GMing, right? Mm -hmm. Like that is something that he does very effectively and has done really well over the course of his career. So it's weird that he would not be one of the spokespeople in this video if he believed in what was going on because he's not shy about being on camera, right? Right. And he's not shy about taking responsibility. So it makes it feel like Peter Dunn doesn't even want these changes. Yeah. And, and maybe that is a, a heretics thing. You know, it could be just a bad, uh, a, not a great PR situation. But when you have a track record as Peter does as a, player manager as someone who's been in tough spots and made tough decisions and whether it worked out or not has taken accountability for it just doesn't doesn't feel great um okay with with this change here dom what does this do to the team uh what do you predict for the squad moving into the spring split I mean, the thing is, they're kind of in the same boat as Carmine Corp, where you could make Ooh. bad decisions, but you perform so poorly, you, you play so poorly in winter that you could just still be terrible and like get sixth. And then that's technically like an improvement over what you did before. So I don't think that this makes them like a good team or anything. Maybe they could, their results could be marginally better. Like maybe they get a better draw in the best of three portion. They, may, they make best of threes. They get a better draw in the best of three portion. And suddenly they're a sixth place team, but I don't think they'll be good. I don't think that this makes them a competitive team. Um, and even though like Yankos wonder, like these guys are professionals. When you watch, when you, when you see the reactions from like Flocked and, and, um, and uh, Yankos on social media, and you even hear Yankos go against things that were said in the video. So Yankos actually reacted to this heretics video. And he even di he disagreed with the points uh, with some of the points that were being made. Primarily, he disagreed with the point that, scrims were worse coming into uh spring split with perks and kaiser on the team or perks and uh perks and trimby on the team when they were scrimming together he says that like oh no this like he just agrees that they were they were performing worse in scrims he thinks that they were doing better in scrims um 
it just seems like you just lost the team. Like this, this was the G2 run back with the boys. And now you removed one of the boys and now it's like all business. I just see, I just feel like the team doesn't even have a huge upside anymore. Whereas before you felt like if perks could just play a little bit better, you know, they could be a confidence team and they could be a team that actually like outperforms expectations. Like now I just feel like, okay, you're solidifying yourself in the sixth to 10th place area, like the sixth to 10th place standing of LEC. Yeah. It, if you were going to run this roster, you run it to the end. Give them time to get the magic back. Uh, I, I I know that when, you know, maybe it's an RNA thing, but like when you are in a managerial position, you only have certain levers to pull to make moves. And with uh, the, the three splits that LEC has, you want to pull those levers, especially if you're not getting the results that you want early. But then why did you put this roster together in the first place, Monty? Yeah, exactly. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think this pans out well for them? Or how? No, let's try that again. How can this pan out well for them, Monty? I'm going to make it harder. <laughs> uh, Zuiru is, uh, has a faker Milky Way-esque rookie <laughs> debut. And that carries them to an LEC title. There you go. All right. They are the uh, Mad Lions darlings of the spring from last year. Maybe they make the run back. Uh, for Yankos' sake, like, holy shit. He's just been through heavy last year. Now he's like, all right, I'm back with the boys. And the boys are just getting put out to pasture. Um, hopefully uh, there's some success there for his sake. Um, friends at home, do you think, do you think this was a good move? And why or why not? Let us know in the comments below because, uh, you know, we get to see the fire show uh, as it happens as uh, LEC will be returning here very soon. And we'll get to see um, the fruits of the labor of the management over of heretics. And and we'll get to see if uh, Peter Dunn starts to come out and say something because the players have already made their reactions known. Um, this one's going to be a good one. Um, speaking of good ones, last week, guys. LCS had a pretty pretty good viewership uh, uh, viewership bump, I'd say, Monty, with no host from LEC. With uh, imagine VCT how good the viewership happening. would have been if they hosted this week on the Super Bowl. It would have been insane. <laughs> <laughs> Up four <laughs> percent. <Yeah. laughs> it's all right. They're gonna do Easter this year too. What Easter is banging for League of Legends. Jesus loves yeah. Easter. He came back just to actually kind of ran it down first, but then he came back. He he ran <laughs> in fountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say sacrilegious things. It's fine. <laughs> and uh came back. Came back into the game. Yeah, Jesus, um, Jesus had guardian angel. That's right. That was that was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty good, Monty. Uh, <laughs> um, he loves lol. So I'm sure the the second year in a row of finals spring finals on easter sunday for as far as i can tell no fucking reason because it's in their studio by the way it's in their studio and there are two weeks before lecs and lck's finals so you could just put it the next weekend you have a month until msi why the fuck is it on easter sunday again why is it on march 31st by the way Degon, I'll, I'll do you one better do me you could have just skipped this week in the rumble room with the chain link fencing and all the money you had to spend to set that up, just had a three week break instead delayed the finals one week. And then it wouldn't have been on Easter Sunday and you wouldn't have had to use the sub studio. Wacky. I, a, a three week break though. I mean, to be fair, if there was a three week break, we would have, we would have got it's exactly the, after, after a two week break, it's, it's the same fucking thing. D God. It's like, if it's two weeks, it might as well be three weeks. You know, it, as long as it gets an off Easter Sunday and doesn't have the yes. league end two weeks earlier than most of the other major regions in the world. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. I agree. I, I, I mean, think... it's, it's, it's pretty weird. Also, I would say the, the issue is that the two week break, I mean, it's essentially ends up being like a three week break because there's two weeks off, but it's three weeks for the players since the players played their last match. And I think that it really hurt the quality of the games 
this last weekend. Like, I think it's bad for the teams competitively as well. Like, it's hard to be in the flow of a season and then just have, like, this random two-week break and maintain the same intensity and actually get the same amount of value. I think that a lot of times what ends up happening is, um, in my experience, when you have a break like this, a lot of times teams, they overestimate their ability to change over that time period. So they'll, they'll take on bigger things. Whereas generally when you're doing the week to week um, grind, you try to focus on like smaller things that are more tangible. It's like, okay, we're going to fix this one problem for the next week. This is what we're going to be focusing our scrims on. A lot of times in my experience, when you have these big breaks, what ends up happening is you start thinking like, oh, well we can incorporate big concepts that we were bad at. So let's say we were a team that was like, you know, really bad at split pushing. We are going to become a good split pushing team over this three weeks. And it just doesn't end up happening. And you end up wasting a lot of time without having that like constant test on the weekends. I think it's very hard for you to um, increase your, your performance, like at a, a good rate. I just think that it, it makes it extremely weird. So that's, that's an issue I see for, for a lot of um, teams generally is they just try to do too much in, in the break. They try to use that, that time to practice um, in, in a way to completely overhaul their team and the end result is that they realize they're not competent enough in all those different areas to incorporate multiple different play styles into like their own and then they just end up kind of just having to go back to what they were doing originally but then they've lost time yeah and and i i really like that point because when you looked at the streaks of teams that won this last week it was in, in with with my interviews as well that I that I was able to sit down with players and coaches, you got to hear a lot of the teams that found success, NRG, Cloud Nine. It was let's get back to the fundamentals over this break, and a lot of the teams that I think struggled. I mean, you, you look at TL and Immortals; these are teams that boomed a couple of teams that had found success. Uh, they. It struggled. I mean, um, they struggled because it felt like they weren't able to close out games, more fundamentals of getting leads and transitioning it into wins. Uh, so it just felt like these the, the teams that we were expected to be good went back to basics and now like found themselves a couple of wins. The teams that were surprising teams just fumbled the bag, really. It, it wasn't just they lost, they they fumbled the bag. They had opportunities to win and they messed it up. So uh, I think the break part there was was definitely uh, valid to streaking teams and, and uh, you know, turning around favors if you focused on the macro there. Um, that, that, that does bring us to uh, our high-key, low-key, no-key of the week, though, which are, which are the best teams to watch in the LCS? Whether in, in those uh, parameters are up to you to interpret, but which ones are the best to watch? And I uh, got a little input from our guest casters, so I'll give that after we introduce the segment. Let's get to it. Uh, this week we had on the LCS, it was uh, Poe Belter and Afromu. Uh, yeah. I got to, got to sit down with them both afterwards. What, what did you guys think of their, their guest appearances, Monty? That was fine. I enjoy both of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like Inspired, actually. I liked Inspired. I thought he was pretty oh, good yeah. on the, the cast. Because, I mean, he is just... Uh, the thing is, I I really like hearing, like, just people that are really good at the game speak about, like, what they're thinking. And I thought that Inspired was really on point in just, like, being able to give his view of the game to the viewer, where, where you start, like, seeing, like, oh, okay, this is how this guy thinks about the game. This is why he's such an effective jungler. Uh, I feel like that's also effective person because the way that he was talking about the game is the same way that he talks in esports soccer. <laughs> yep. Like it's, it's very analytical and also a little punchy. And he's like, "Well, now I can't do anything," <laughs> or like, "Now, now this is gonna happen." It was like, "Oh, this is same guy, same guy." Um, with Afro how good and is Pope, he, how good is he at esports soccer? I think he's very good. He is a All first right. to second Fair round enough. pick. Like All we, right. we, Good. we always have drafts uh, in esports <laughs> soccer. Uh, usually it's myself or Vulcan or uh, Sharks, a uh, coach of Immortals, or Casper as like captains. And then the um, amalgamation of us, plus there's a, there's one PA um, who, who plays with us. Super good. 
he's always a first round pick too. So it's usually <laughs> me, Casper, and then this one PA is like first round picks and Vulcan as first round picks or, or, or goalie. Anyways, sidetracked. Poe Belter and Afro both said, uh, cause I was like, Hey man, uh, welcome back. It's good to see, you know, how you've been, blah, blah, blah. Those interviews will go up, uh, probably like this week and next week for, um, uh, Digani sports YouTube channel. Uh, I was like, what, what, what we, they're like, oh, it's my first time back since I was playing as a pro, whatever. It's like, what, what do you, what did you notice the most? And it's like, this shit just feels sloppy and it makes me feel like I still got it. <laughs> so with that said, they could tell that, uh, you know, maybe there's some growth there in terms of the yeah, skill. Yeah, I don't think that, that feeling ever go goes away. I'll, I'll be yeah. honest. I feel like once you, once you've been a pro, you always are going to have that ego within you. Like I still feel to this day when I play solo queue, I'm like, fucking put me, give me an Uter game on stage. I'm gonna fucking take some heads. Like, like throw me in this game right now. Put me on Volibear or Udyr. Like it's time, bro. Like I'm, I'm going to fucking stomp an LCS game. You get so Volibear, Udyr, Adam. What, what, uh, power ranking of jungler are you in the LCS? Where are you? If you get Volibear, Udyr, top, bro, a five? It depends on the game for them. Dude, if you put me on a Volibear game right now, like you put me right now on a Volibear game, I'm I'm top four for sure. I'm going to run a fucking game. I'm telling you, I'm running a fucking game. Like, we are getting six grubs, two drakes. The game is fucking won. Uh, Blabber, contracts inspired. Who else? Bro, I might take their their heads too, bro. I might take everyone's <laughs> heads right now. I'm just saying, like, it might just be over for them. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right, also, let's get like, through it's, it. It's so uh, hard. I, I mean, for football, like, I could, watch the LCS. I mean, for uh, football, one thing I would say is just he plays against all these guys in solo queue. When you play enough challenger solo queue, like you're just gonna you're just gonna play versus pros all the time, and then you're gonna win enough of a percentage of the games that you're just going to like believe that you could do it on stage if you've had that experience before um but yeah so in terms of like high key uh low key no key where are we starting we're starting no key as yeah let's start with the no key teams sorry no key teams which teams do you and this is just uh best teams to watch right not best teams not, not like you know almost you yeah know, exactly like, what do you like to watch i i'm i'm no key excited for team liquid i hate watching team liquid play <laughs> they, they really like just piss me off so i'll go no key for team liquid I'm going to go Noki, Dignitas, and Immortals. I, I do not like watching either of those teams play. They do not. It doesn't I don't mind watching joy. Dignitas. Really? What? Yeah, I don't mind watching Dignitas. They're boring. I, I think I think Dove is, like, pretty good. I think that, that he is. He, he's somebody who's, <laughs> I, like, kind I, I of would a million watch. times rather watch Team Liquid than Dignitas because at least, look, Team Liquid had a some beautiful games the first game they played against cloud nine their macro was fucking gorgeous so they've got that yeah, going but it for was them such an easy Plus, game to macro like the, look, they're macroing versus a, a team that has no tools it look they still executed it very well and there were points in the latest game against cloud nine where it looked like they were going to get dragon soul but now my favorite thing is just seeing how they throw <laughs> yeah i don't know I, for me i just don't like teams that should be good that are performing poorly i just don't like watching teams why like should that. they be good they look at their mid and 80 carry they're, they're performing I to mean, your expectations they have literally like double world champ on this fucking roster they just imported a korean right from lck <laughs> They literally have double world champ plus newly imported LCK player. Like the fact that they're hey, you place, of all I've people should know that enough. playing with a world champ doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean it's gonna hey. go well in an hey. <laughs> all I'm saying is when I had a when I had a world champ on, on my team, we weren't finishing in the bottom fucking three of the league. That's all I'll say. That's right. The curse of fourth, baby. No, no, we never even got fourth. We were we were third. I played placed third both splits with Piglet. Oh, Chris Fourth happened afterwards. Beforehand. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Piglet helped the team. There you go. Yeah. I mean, so, the Chris Fourth yeah. thing was like a, just a narrative, to be honest, because like I was uh, like when I joined the team, it was season uh, four, so I got two fourths and two thirds. Like and people, people make it seem like, did you get fourth your whole career? It's like, no, I played with Dig. We got second, and then it was like two fourths, two thirds. Wasn't that bad. I feel like we haven't had a piglet rant in a while, so uh, that was. Yeah, that I've been going good. on random I ones. I was trying. I was trying to provoke him. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been going on some random piglet rants. 
I just get like, I get some like banger stories out about Piglet. I mean, one of my favorite stories that I tell um, pretty frequently that people know is uh, the one where he would literally just kill his supports in order to try to see if they would trust him. So like, I mean, that's like, it's pretty fucking <laughs> safe, to be honest. He would just force his supports to int. Like he would just tell them like, yo, you should go in right now. And then they would be like, what? Like, I don't see an angle. Okay, like, but I'll, okay, I guess I'll do it. And then they would just die. And then he'd be like, good, good. Yeah. Now I know that you'll <laughs> like it. I just need you to be able to like die for me at, at like a moment's notice. I need to be able to just like end your life at any moment that I need to. Like, it's fucking base. <laughs> I, who, 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 was, who was that suffering at that time? Was that uh, Smoothie? God, poor Andy. <laughs> poor yeah. You know, oh yeah. You know what? I mean they, they played one game together, they never played again. Like I don't know. Smoothie Smoothie he made Smoothie cry in a week. Literally one week of scrims, he made Smoothie cry. It was pretty based. I've never seen nice anything guy, like man. it. He yeah, like the thing is, like, it was just such a it was such a crazy way he would make people cry. Like he wouldn't make them cry because he was like being so mean to them. It's just that like they could tell that he thought that they were such a piece of shit that they would just feel so bad about themselves that they would start crying. <laughs> I'll I'll go. I'll go confirm with uh, Vulcan tonight at esports soccer because <laughs> he spent some yeah. time with him over at Clutch. Yeah, I don't know if the I don't, gamer I mean, version. I, I think I asked um, Vulcan about this before because I did an episode of the Crackdown, but apparently, like Vulcan just didn't break. Vul Vulcan Vulcan didn't have that same experience, but that was also like season eight. Yeah, he has the dog in him. Um, for me, I think the team I don't like watching the most is actually NRG. It's it's I don't like watching them. It stresses me out that they're not playing well, that they're not playing as good as they've been, that it feels like they get a better bot lane and it's they're playing worse. I'd say who them could have, who could and, have expected the, that this specific group of players would have regressed to the mean. I, I don't know, man. Who could have guessed? It's so weird. <laughs> you know me. I, 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 I like I like the storyline. I like support my boy Juanito. Uh, yeah, it just hurts Con watching Con play contracts. Play. Truly the Zeka of 2023. <laughs> no man, he's still he's still performing well on Ivern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All I'm gonna okay, say okay. is at least Zeka was a world champion is in on as and is on a top three team in LCK right now. Contracts won a Swiss what stage game. Three, what does top three mean in LCK? Like there's like <laughs> no, like it's like there's a top two and then everyone else. Uh, we'll, we'll get, get there. Top, we'll get there. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a lottery. But, but my point is he didn't just get bopped in quarters and you know, now might not even make top three the same. Just I will say that every every time they show uh the the Zeka the Zeka graphic, it's like world champion. And then here's like the list of like they have a graphic whenever they play Gen G of like all the achievements of Chovy, all of the achievements of Faker, and just like one little line there for Zeka. They isn't always do it. Dirty. <laughs> isn't it crazy that League is has such a horrible format that you might that you'd probably rather have Zika's resume? Like if you could yep. choose between Zika's resume and Chovy's resume, you'd rather have Zika's resume. It's it's the same thing. It's soccer, like the way that soccer's set up. Like you could have a ton of like club championships, so like uh, like uh, uh, Champions League like trophies and uh, league titles. But another guy has oh, the World Cup. So I feel like it's similar. No, I mean you're comparing it probably to the worst title system in professional sports. So, I mean. <laughs> You could be right, but it just goes to show how fucked up Riot's international circuit, competitive circuit is, because the I World Cup is the worst fucking tournament ever devised. So it all it is, you break up teams with established synergy and you just put nationalism into it and you literally make worse teams for those players with a bunch of like random bums that have to fill out from their various countries instead of being on like the giga stacked super teams that they're on most of the time. And then we have to watch them play and pretend like it's in a fucking terrible format of pool play into a single elimination tournament that hinges frequently on the utterly dog shit tiebreaker format that is penalty kicks. I love it. It is D God. It is garbage it is, it is garbage great. why are we deciding an elimination match 
that has been played for 90 minutes between two entire teams into a 1v1 that has no bearing on the rest of the game. Soccer is a garbage sport and it has garbage formats. And this comparison just makes Riot look absolutely giga terrible for the fact that what you're saying is actually true, that you can make these comparisons, but the comparisons make my heart ache. There it is. All right. We're starting to get we're starting to get some friends in the chat now. That was a very Kakona American take. Give me the American football. Let's just get him one chance to score a touchdown to end the game. That happened over at the Bowl of Super this year. This year. That's how we should end games. America. Cacao. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, rest of the world, that soccer is just a horribly designed sport. And here, if you want me to go against America, baseball is also a terribly designed sport. So there you go. I also hate baseball. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we derailed because as Monty uh, uh, poked Dom for Piglet uh, uh, rants, I know I can always poke Monty for format rants. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yes, NRG, beneficiary of a great format that led them to be best of the West. But uh, I just don't like watch them domestically right now because they don't they don't look great. You can also throw in TL there for me. Uh, you maybe maybe like hate watch TL because of just I just want Ian to be good. I just want APA to be good, and he'll get a lead. He'll type, and right after he types, you can see him type. He's standing still. He walks forward and then gets like smashed by the jungler and then dies. Which is what happened this week as well, according to uh, some sources <laughs> that played in the, those games. You get a kill, type, and then boom, get boomed. Very funny. Very, very funny. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go to our low-key teams. Excited to, or best teams to watch. Low-key best teams to watch Look, in LCS. I think, I think Liquid, NRG, they fall into this category for me. Cloud9. I guess a little bit as well. I'm not super psyched on watching Cloud9 anymore because sure, they can have a really dominant performance like they did against FlyQuest, but FlyQuest looks super off that game. And then the that very next game, they're once more just inexplicably almost losing to Team Liquid. And like that Team Liquid game was fucking terrible. From every, everybody should get fired from Cloud9 and Team Liquid for that game. So it, like, it looked I'm like not... KT versus Dom one. That shit, yes, like you should that literally was fire terrible too. <laughs> all ten players and the coaching staff. Like <laughs> that was, yeah, that was crazy. But see, the difference is, we only got one game of Cloud Nine versus Team Liquid. We got three of D Plus versus Ooh. KT. Yeah. <laughs> it was an extended <laughs> fiesta. <laughs> it was an extended fiesta. Dom, are you Loki? Who are you Loki on? like low-key excited for energy i would say i think energy is like I, I think that they'll i think that they'll be better than they are right now like they're, they're having a lot of really weird games and they're trying they're still trying things out like they're doing vein top like i think that if they really just want to start collecting wins and that like shit hits the fan they can go back to contracts on his tanks like renekton's back in the meta for dokla you can just play weak side also i think the jace buffs actually help this team because dokla's best champion is probably jace um, historically, like this guy was a Jace Aurelia two trick in like season seven, even. Um, so yeah, I think this team will be decent. I think that um, like everyone is is high on hundred thieves because of their record, but like I don't think hundred thieves is actually going to so do much. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty fraudulent. I think the best three teams are Cloud Nine, Energy, and, and FlyQuest. I wouldn't be surprised to see Energy win versus FlyQuest in a best of five. I don't think FlyQuest are like particularly amazing. Yeah, I don't think they're bulletproof, but they are. They are. They feel like the most complete team. Like it. It, it is. I don't. I don't so. know, man. When their bot lane runs it down, they like really run it down. They they actually <laughs> just sabotage games. Like the call is coming from inside the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, remember for for this specific high key, low key, no key. We're not talking best teams. Best teams. That's why. That, that's why. That, yeah. That's why my high key teams would be FlyQuest, a hundred thieves, and Shopify. Because I fucking love watching Shopify. I don't care if they're you bad. You love Shopify, are, man. I do love Shopify. They are consistently entertaining. They are consistently entertaining. I love watching the creative ways in which they lose. I just have fun watching Shopify again. I had fun watching the Shopify Dignitas loss. 
God. but <laughs> but I, I think FlyQuest also, you know, there's there's an air of spiciness, an air of randomness about FlyQuest. You don't know what you're gonna get. You, you know, usually with Whippo teams, that's always true, but now we have the Masu Busio bot lane, and God knows what's gonna fucking happen down there, how the games <laughs> they play. So I'm in for that one. And then Hundred Thieves, I enjoy watching this team. Obviously, everybody loves Sniper. I enjoy seeing how hard Sniper can win lane and like Quid can do kind of all right and River can do pretty well. And then they have to drag Ayla's corpse across the finish line every single game. And Sniper also will make some dreadful macro plays and get caught out. So it's like, can River and Quid just like carry Ayla to the end of the game or not? It's fun. It's fun for me. <laughs> so those are the teams I actually, I, I derive entertainment from watching. I had the uh, chance this week to interview um, both coaches, Spooks and Golden Glue. And I, I did throw out like, hey, let's let's run down your roster. You know, River is aggressive. Everyone talk about Sniper. Meech is low-key slept on. Quid is having a renaissance. Talk to me about Bill. Like, talk to me about Ayla. Because he's generally going to go under the radar. Like, what is he providing? What What are you seeing that he can't see? And the way that they answered is like, he provides a lot of the intangibles. He provides a lot of the shot calling. One of our wins was completely based on the fact that he warded behind one of these teams. We TP'd on him, we killed him. And then we ended up rushing through the base. Uh, he, he provides a lot of those things. I think it's difficult, but, but to, to fully quantify, um, but he has been an integral part of the team. I just, we, I just wanted to throw that one out there because I feel like as a viewer, it's what you've said, Monty. It's like, okay, Ayla's getting pulled across. So wh where's the redeeming qualities? And, you know, the coaches, they're obviously going to say positive things, but uh, those were some of the things that they relayed. His, his uh, most redeeming quality is, uh, you know, drafting from the support position and having a North American residency. That's, that's why he's here. <laughs> Jesus. Dom, who are your uh, besties to watch? <laughs> Get out of this I mean, one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think Cloud9 was like the worst team to watch before, but I think they will they will be the best team to watch soon. Like, I thought that their game versus uh, FlyQuest was, it was pretty close to being like almost a perfect game if if JoJo didn't get randomly caught uh, on their first Baron. I mean, that game was just closed out like through just solid play. Like they just, I don't know, they just played the game like without many mistakes. Um and I think Jojo, like Jojo's probably one of my favorite players to watch in LCS. I think, like, I do think he's the best player in LCS, like between him and Inspired um, for me. But I just, I, I just like watching him play because I think he's really, really good. He does make mistakes, not a perfect player, but I just think he's insane. I, uh, Monty got too excited to tell his high key ones that I didn't get to tell my low key ones. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what are your uh, low key ones? The, the low key ones for me are the 80 carries that just don't get supported by their team to see how hard they can carry while being sat on by a, uh, like a tanky top laner. So give me the B boy, give me <laughs> uh smolder from Tomo, give me tactical. No, no, no. Everyone. Oh, that was all. no. Yeah, oh, Tomo, Tomo makes smolder look balanced. Like he makes <laughs> smolder actually look like it's the type of champion where like it requires skill. No, there was. There was one game where I think it was FBI played Smolder, and that did not look great. I think it was yeah, that but that one, was like so. Smolder release. I mean, this is like if you watch FBI and or if you watch a uh, Tomo in some of these fights, it's actually impossible for him to die if he just uses his abilities in any other way than the way he uses them. Like he like flies <laughs> into the whole team, and then he'll like cleanse flash forward like into the skill. It's like. <laughs> did you just did you just misclick like all your abilities at the same time? Like what even happened Dude, to you? I was you I was I like was this? just watching him just like panic use all of his subs <laughs> into a wall. <laughs> yeah. I mean there was, some, there was the reason why that dig versus Shopify game was so long is because of how terrible Tomo is. Like if Tomo was at all better, they just win the game instantly off like the engage from the the, the NAR. Like it's just an insta win. Not like, everyone can be himself. It's, it's yeah, rough. Not not everyone can be great teams. So you got to find an identity somehow. And and filthy Frank is providing the entertainment value there for him because oh, he's uh, filthy. You know, he's a Rich, filthy Rich player. And Dove, Rich and Dove are like they're trying too hard. They're not. They're not entertaining enough. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah. I think Tomo is literally just the worst part of the team. If you look at the team, uh, I mean, I think xu has been surprisingly good. Like I thought that he was going to be yeah. the weakest player. I think he's been solid. Um, 
I mean, I, I'm just the type, like, I think Isles does make decent decisions. Like, his engagements with Nautilus were part of the reason why they were able to, like, win these fights. Like, his idea of when to go in with the, the timing on the Nar flank um, was good. I mean, I think Dove is actually, like, low-key underrated um, in LCS, but their AD carry is just bad. And because of that, they just lose a lot of games. Damn, the guy that they built around. The house that this was built on will now be, uh, you know, I guess on the block. According I, mean, to I don't even know what that means, built around. Like, they, did they build around Tomo, or did they just, like, did they just find, like, imports? And they're like, okay, like, this guy is North American and an AD carry. Who else did we get? <laughs> It'll be our AD carry. <laughs> he drafts from the AD carry position. He possesses a North American residency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, those are the those are my low keys. It's that kind of like clumped up. Like, well, how do the AD carries play? But when we go to the high keys, give me give me fly quests. I like the way that they've just been put together. The renaissance of Jensen has been good. Figuring out what the bot lane is gonna you know play and how they're gonna play pop off there uh, or blow up. It, that's always fun and 100 thieves watch 100 thieves man is just it's just fun it's just fun to know that sniper is going to do something brilliant and then do something so brain dead and then do something that looks brain dead and it ends up being brilliant like it, it is just I, that's why they're the fun human to watch. highlight reel <laughs> he's a human light reel sometimes the lights are low also again Meech Meech has been kind of like I think just slept on it the the um, the context that the coaches gave is like well he has been in the academy system for a while been on top academy teams for a little while so he's not like a rookie rookie but he is a rookie he's like as prepared of a rookie you could be so I was like oh, okay so this is this has been a fun team to watch. So watching them get just watching Bwipo put a uh, sniper in the dumpster was just great. It was just great to watch. Like, was it great for 100 Thieves development? Probably, maybe. Was it like, you know, the closest game? Not really. But just to know that Bwipo is like, fuck this kid. And then just shits on him is great. Like, he just calling the shot and yep. doing that. So, yeah. Um, that was, those are my high keys. Uh, all right. Well, those are our best teams to watch in the LCS. So, friends, let us know who do you like watching and why. Uh, do you like hate watching? Do you like weird picks? Do you like bad teams? Do you like good teams? Do you like teams that used to be good that are now bad? Do you like bad teams that used to be good? <laughs> they're, we got they're, they're all here in the LCS. Let us know which ones you like and uh, what your flavor is. Uh, also in the chat, please stop talking about the MLS and soccer leagues in North America. It's not a good league. Like Monty won that <laughs> argument. What are all you right? talking Monty about? That argument. Messi, the greatest player of all time, is in MLS. Digon, that means it's good, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. David Beckham you know, was in we, MLS. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have a we, we Digon. I don't know what you're talking about. We don't have an international soccer system where like a bunch of the players are just best players are just randomly in the Saudi leagues or MLS, right? Thereby diluting them and making the overall sport worse. No, uh, that. It made that league better for a little bit, and then they got they got the bag and left. They got the bag and left. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> are we? Is LCS was old LCS the Saudi league months? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, is the answer. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It was the old. It was. It was the. It was the Korean exodus to the LPL. That that was the old Saudi. Oh, league. don't worry. The the future LCS is also going to be the Saudi league. It's <laughs> yeah, that's actually <laughs> true. I, uh, by the way, it would not surprise me at all if uh, by next year, ESL was writing LCS. That would not surprise me at all. I just, we'll see. We'll see. Digon, they're already see exper they're, they're already experimenting with having it uh, not on the main stage in the Riot Studio. Just going to put that out there for you. They're already experimenting with it. Over at you can't, uh, you e can't go back. ESCWWC. No, not just that. I'm saying like they put them in the closet already. So oh. you know they'll they'll be prepared to move this to a different studio. We'll see. We'll see, Digon. The Saudi the money's idea. gonna come. The, the Saudi money's gonna come knocking, and nobody's gonna say no. Uh, what did what did we think of the chain link fence and um the the face off? I mean, it was whatever, right? They did what the best they could in a shit situation. Yeah, 
Yeah, I thought it was the, fun. I mean, I like it's kind of shit for the way that things are going because I feel like this is this would have been a really like if they did not actively kill LCS for like four years straight, this would actually be like such a good split of LCS. Which I mean, it is a good split of LCS. I think the the mm -hmm. players have more personality than it's been. Than, yeah, it's fun. You know, like the people that have been in the league, a lot of the the imports that they're adding, like for example, Umpty, I think is a great person to have in a, in LCS. You know, like he's comfortable talking in front of in front of the camera. It seems like he's actually enthusiastic about being here. He's not one of the imports that's like here and he just looks depressed. I'd say the same thing about like Dove. Like his vibe is more like, you know, like oh, I'm like uh, like even Quid. Like a lot of these players seem like they actually want to play as opposed to like ah oh, yeah they're just fucking some old wash player collecting a bag you know like i don't think that they have much better options than this it's not like these guys could be an lck right now so um well umpty could definitely be an lck yeah. now but umpty not on a good LCK. team <laughs> now you could be on bro again maybe uh, yeah exactly this is one game winning streak bro baby yep. <laughs> They beat someone that wasn't Kwang Dong Freaks, finally. Yeah, they, they beat, beat DRX tonight. They beat DRX today. I watched it. They almost, I, I don't know how they like, they, they flipped a Baron when they were up like 10K gold at 40 minutes, but it's fine. We'll just accept it. The Giga Chads, baby. Let's talk, let's talk LCK. All yeah. right, <laughs> get to it. Uh, to close it on out, let's go to our Galaxy Brain Club. Which teams are the true elites right now? So uh, yeah, time for the big brain stuff. So we do get to talk about LCK in this part. So elite teams around the world. Uh, we Earlier in the year, you guys kind of projected it. Monty, you've done your power rankings of those top teams. Uh, where where do we start? Do we just give well, T1 I think, and I think we're just trying like, to yeah. We're trying to say, like, who are, like, the S-tier teams? Because we're coming up on playoffs. You know, we're coming up on the first international tournament of the year. So who do we think are teams that, like, legitimately have a shot at winning? Like, a, a decent shot at winning? Not some crazy dark horse, like, FPX, right? That even though they're performing well right now are, like, still quite a flawed team. Mm -hmm. And for Elsie Game, and Dob said it earlier, like, this is a two-team league right now. It really is T1 and Gen G. And you might think, oh, well, Hanwha only has one more loss. Right, but it's the answer is standing. It's such a. It is. Standing. It is a fake standing. <laughs> if you watch, if you watch the Hanwha Life versus Genji series, like it, it actually feels like Hanwha Life could never beat Genji. It, it looks like if they played a hundred <laughs> threes, Genji would win a hundred best of threes. Like even when Genji, like, like it, it's almost like Hanwha Life is so much worse than Genji that it makes Genji play worse in the games. Like Genji just goes for decisions that are like kind of sloppy, and they're like, "All right, all right, focus up, boys. Like, let's just fucking close them out. You know, game's over." It, the, the series was not even close. If you look at the kill score, you might be like, oh, game two is kind of close. It literally just never felt like Hanwha Life was going to win either of the games played. And I think the problem, too, is that when then when we see teams play Hanwha, like, you know, maybe some of us on this show had some hope that KT might actually defeat them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just get slammed. So, you know, there's like... <clears throat> Gen GT1, Vast Gulf, Hanma, Vast Gulf, and then the shit show that is who? D plus GT and Kwangdung. Like the the so who's the, the best shit... out of those three teams? Nobody knows. <laughs> I'm gonna say Dom one. Dom one. Yeah, oh, I know you I are. Guys. I know you are. You're you're trying to I set them up for it. You, you were you are, you've been trying end, to make Dom. this claim. <laughs> yes, I've been trying to make the claim, and you were against me. You thought that you thought I the KT was gonna beat you. Dom one. Uh, all right, I counter you. I counter you with this. The best game in that series was played by KT and was game number two. And then they just lost. They still two massively threw that game at a point. Like they were up like 10 K <laughs> gold did. and they somehow like they did. didn't end get like, didn't get soul. I mean, these teams are, are terrible, but I, I think Dom one, just has better play. Like lucid has been so fucking bad too, man. Like watching this guy, it's like, wasn't he supposed to be mechanically good? Wasn't that his thing that he was supposed to be like a mechanical prodigy, <laughs> but like his mechanic is like, I'm, he made me turn off my stream in uh, that game too, by the way. No. That game two, I, I had my stream on. I just said LPL. Game two, I switched to Dom1 versus, uh, versus KT. And he threw that Sejuani ult mid where he missed by like, I don't even know, like maybe like 700 units. You know, like this guy just completely missed a QR on a Varus sitting mid, like by such a bad degree that I ended my stream. I refuse to show that to my viewers anymore. Like I felt like actually <laughs> guilty about what I was doing to my viewers. So I had to end my stream just, uh, just out of compassion. <laughs> um for them so 
I mean, I don't know. Like, if, if Lucid plays a little bit better, I still think Showmaker is good. It's just Damwon's macro is fucking terrible. But then also KT's yep. macro is, like, somehow even worse than Damwon's macro. <laughs> so it's like... And also, are we, are we done coping about uh, Kwangdong? Like, at, at no. this point, we can just... What? Why I'm not. not? <laughs> Great <laughs> argument. I'm not. Why are we not done coping about Kwangdong? I'm, I'm not done coping about Kwangdong yet. I'm I'm gonna cope even harder. You just wait. How? How? This week, this week, I think they'll have a decent performance tomorrow against T1. They are gonna get smacked 2-0 by T1. <laughs> it's not gonna even I, be. They will lose two, They will lose 2-0. I I will give you that. But I think that one of those games might be somewhat close. Uh, it will be I game number two. One of the games against Gen G was kind of close. Yes, but that's the same thing. It's because it's because Gen G beat Kwangdong's ass so fucking hard in game <laughs> one that you like game two, you're like not even mentally prepared to, to play the game because you know how much better you are than the enemy teams. <laughs> like, oh, I don't, okay. I, don't, I see. I, I don't hold that against teams. Like a lot of people really take that to heart. Like when when Gen G has a slot, like Gen G had a sloppy game two versus, versus Hanwha Life, right? But like when you're that much better than a team, like fuck it, you just are that much better than a team to me. Gen G, they stomp when you stop a team game one, and then game two, you're like in a position to stop, and then you kind of like fuck up a little bit, and then you get it together and you end the game still in like under thirty minutes. That's just that's how LPL teams play all the fucking look, time, to be honest. Look, I'm gonna hold on. The, the I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to my Kwangdong Copium until the very last week of the regular season because that's when they play D plus and KT, and that's when we're gonna get the matches that really determine seeding and who uh, doesn't play the third seed. So, I mean, Kwangdong, I, I I was hoping they lost to Nongshim. I'm gonna be honest. I was hoping that they were gonna lose to Nongshim. <laughs> like when I when when they were one one. Why do you hate three? them so much? <laughs> Because I just, well, it's, it's mainly because of you. I just want you to admit to myself. <laughs> You're the reason why I'm flaming them. Because every single show, I have to, like, come here. And, like, it's just not good for you to be supporting Kwangdong. Like, it's just not healthy for you to support Kwangdong. Oh, you okay, can't have you, KT, you can't about have Kwangdong, you can't have anything. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't want KT. Ghostly. I don't want, I do not want KT. I do not want KT. I, I always thought they were frauds. I fucking hate them this year. Um, but Kwangdong has, has been has charmed me, you know. They've charmed me, and I believe in Cuz. It's not good, you. Monty. It's not good. <laughs> they, like, they, look, they they. I'm touched though that you're so lost. concerned. <laughs> you're so concerned about my health. <laughs> All I'm hoping for, right? Because Kwangdong <laughs> is definitely losing to T1, and they're definitely going to lose to Hanwha Life next week. So I'm hoping that when they play TRX. Or they play against uh, DRX, they actually just lose one of those series. So then we can be fully done coping about like Kwang Dung. <laughs> then it's just like over, over, over. Like then, then it would just be borderline delusion when they're like. I'm just, six I'm just nine. waiting until they beat D plus in the final week of the regular season. You just wait. They might, <laughs> but it won't. But it won't matter. That's the thing is they'll, they'll already be like such a sixth place disaster team by then that no one will even care. My my worry, my worry here, Monty, on the Kwang Dong train is that. Do you see what T1 did to Bro? Like, I'm worried that they just get that level bodied and then they like slip up here against like DRX or a team that they should beat or like, you know, Fear X or something. Like, that. that's that's my fear that the mental warfare is going to just be too much of just getting slapped around by like a Kench or something. Nah, nah, they have some, they have some good veterans. They have some good veterans. I believe in them. They're not going to lose right. to the shitter teams. They're not going to lose. So, teams. look, guys, I know that we are talking about right. such yeah, great we're elite, about like the elite teams. So, the point is that they're only T1 and Gen G. These are the best teams within the LCK. They're the only real contenders. It would be shocking if these weren't the teams that were sent to MSI. And either of these teams would obviously have a very good chance of winning MSI. They're going to play each other this week. It'll be very exciting. Let's go over to the LPL teams because I think things are a lot murkier over there as yeah. to who we think might be going to MSI or who might be, like, truly internationally elite. Like, it's pr I think it's pretty convincing to say that BLG, outside of that whack-ass fluke game to IG, has looked very, very good. Um, there are some kind of fraud teams towards the top of the span standings based on strength of schedule, but are we willing to put BLG, JDG, and top esports in this bucket? Yeah, definitely. In my opinion, like definitely, I think JDG like looks like probably the sketchiest out of all of them. But the thing that I that that people don't 
understand about like LPL is like a team like BOG when they're already eight and one, nine and one, they've already secured going to playoffs. Like they are playing to improve. Like they are playing smolder every single game. A lot of the mistakes you see them making is like BLG style is to fight all the time, right? Like that, that is, they're like the mega Chinese team. That was the thing that I would always say is that they're the most Chinese team in China. And what that means is that they want to fight everything. They want to die. They want to fight everything. They're learning new champions. Like Smolder just came, came into the meta when they play against WE, by the way, WE is not a bad team. Everyone thinks yes, that WE is just terrible. Like they're actually a fine team. I think WE actually played a, a per, they played pretty well against BLG. It's not like they mega inted and BLG just like won because of some flukes. Especially they just game got number, twice. game number one was really quite close. Yeah, game number one was close. And game number two, it's like even when they're losing, like they just kind of got outscaled by the Smolder, which is just a problem with Smolder. It doesn't feel like WE played horrible. So that's a decent team to test yourself against. And BLG took fights that they shouldn't at that point in the game. But that's something that they can easily correct. They can also just draft, you know, the stuff that they have been drafting the entire split and, and win those types of games. So when teams try to like push themselves forward and they try to adapt and they, they are going to be playing new champions, they're playing different play styles. I don't hold that against them forever. It's like the same thing a, a, around like T1, for example. Like when T1 plays an ADTF game and they have like a fucking miserable game against Nong Shim and lose it. I'm not like sitting there like, <laughs> damn, is T1 washed? Like I might like jokingly say that on stream, but like I don't actually think that T1 is a bad team because they try to push themselves forward and they're not good at playing ADTF. Same thing happened with JDG. JDG literally had the same exact game that T1 had where they, where Ruler tried to play ADTF and it looked like Guma playing ADTF. Like these motherfuckers just suck at TF. Like it is what it is. They're probably not going to have to play it because it's getting nerfed. Like whatever. We can just forget about them fucking playing TF and forget the results of these games. Um, but I don't mind that from a team like BLG. Like I don't think there's any way where like when I'm watching BLG play and when they play at their max level, like they are a team that is definitely better than yeah. a team like Hanwha Life in my mind. Like they're definitely in oh, that yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah um for you know being one of the best teams in the world and blg like they almost won msi last year they almost won msi last year and they upgraded their roster this year and they looked way better they look way better right now than they did at this point last year um in lpl like they barely skated into playoffs um in spring so this team is just solid like they they are a good team they're playing things that they're not particularly good at right now so the results are not they're not dominating the enemy teams like as hard as they can, but like they're also just trying to be the best they can at this patch. So Knight is playing a bunch of karma. If Knight goes back to playing Ari, if they play Ari and they play Vi on Shun, they'll look yeah, they'll look fucking good. If if Knight is playing Talia, Ari, you know, his fucking just normal champions, Nico, whatever, they'll just go they're going to just fucking beat these teams. Um, if they play these aggressive bot lanes like they did before, they will just like have dominant performances. But the whole goal is to improve at this point in the split because they've pretty much already secured playoffs. I think they actually have technically secured playoffs um, already, and there's still six best of threes left. And they know that like they're they're playing to win the league. They're not playing to like, you know, to to get into playoffs or something like that. Like they want to just be as good as possible. Yeah, Dom hates T1. Not because they're playing bad, just because he has a hate boner for T1, obviously. <laughs> yes. Uh, Monty, go ahead. You're in thinking. Yeah, I, I think that's just where we kind of draw the line. Like, um, between, <clears throat> like, those, in my mind, those are kind of like the five elite teams right now. And even among those elite teams, I think, like, it's like BLG, T1, and Gen G are, would be like the, the chief favorites. And then JDG and Top Esports might be just like, slightly below i would i would say top esports looks better to me than than jdg, than JDG looks like i would say like top esports i would put it like the bottom they, they like maybe less... that would be top three then four and then five would be like i would put jdg considerably lower the thing is you just have to give like it's hard for me to discount a team like jdg like even though they don't look dominant the same way they looked dominant last year this is a team that in 2022 won LPL kind of looking like this. Like they, they had like kind of sketchy early games and they were better at setups, better in team fighting. And you can do that versus teams that are, that are good as well. Like, it's not like they're going to get ran over so hard by Gen G that they can never make it to like a Drake fight where they can outperform. Yeah. Also, and it's, it's worth saying too, uh, in tops case that what their first loss was the very first game of the LPL, which is like everybody coming off the break, which, and they lost to BLG. So read into that what you want. Um, mm -hmm. And the second loss was just giga fluky in that wacky game three versus FPX. Yeah. Like it, that was the, 
Baron for Nexus trade that was like so fucking wild. I mean, it was unbelievable to see the end of that game. And I don't think anybody watches that game three and is like, yeah, FBX deserves to win this game. <laughs> like, they yeah. didn't. They it were getting like popped. FBX lost. <laughs> it feels like FBX was the worst team after they, after they won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, J JDG have a hard strength of schedule coming up as well. They have the Milky Way experience next week. They have top esports after that. Anyone legends after that. Like they Weibo after that. IG after that. Like they they don't have a easier strength of schedule compared to some of the other teams, I'd say. So that's true. That actually is quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It, it I mean they'll be tested. They'll be tested for right. sure. All right. So we'll get we'll get the definitive answer on the four or five matchup. But by that point, you know, JDG might not you know, maybe FPX is in that four or five of what the elite is. Yeah, I, that's, that's F, cool FPX, I, the thing is, like, FPX is just they're not going to luck into the same, like, number of wins that they've had on these yeah. fluky circumstances. And, like, I, the real fear is once you get into a best of five against this team, like, and, you, you know, your opponents have a lot of time to prepare specifically for you might be tougher. For I them. mean, the, what the is, problem is that when you look at the other rosters, like you can pair the players that are looking weak on JDG, like Flandre and, and Yagao. Number one, I think Flandre is mega over, uh, underrated by people right now. I don't think he's been close to as bad as people. Um, oh, he's been think. fine a lot of the time. He's been fine a lot of the time. And a lot of times he's just getting like no help or Kanavi is like actively ruining Flandre's lane when Flandre puts himself <laughs> in like decent spots right. in the lane. So <laughs> it's it's not really like Flandre is going to get mega outclassed. We've seen Flandre International. We've seen him play against the best um, players in the world. You see him now playing in LPL, and it's not like he is getting giga gapped by people to the degree where he cannot play the game anymore. Like he looks stable, he looks fine, and he is going to be a weak side top laner for this team. Um, and you compare that to people like Duck Dom on FPX, and it's like Duck Dom will lose you way more games than Flandre will lose you. And the fear of FPX is once people start drafting really cynically and they're like, okay, you guys are not playing Maokai, you're not playing Senna, you're not playing fucking Ash, you're not playing Vers, you're not playing any of the stuff that you can just kind of be a passenger with and you actually have to lane and stuff, then Duck Dom is going to run it down. Like, it feels like Duck Dom will just lose you so many games. Uh, we have that clear top five. Who is, who's close? Who's close? Give like two or three teams that are close to the top five, whether it's well, like on the bubble. Well, it's Hanwa, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then it's... like at this point in time, I think you can say that FPX is pretty legit, yeah. especially after the last week of competition. So those That's are the only team those, I'll put I mean, there from LPL. Yeah, they're, those are the ones that I think are the most on the bubble. I mean, so people no will get IG, hyped. A, no well, IG, no IG, which is why people are getting hyped, but like they're not good. Yeah, I don't really believe. He could in have that. lost EDG easily yesterday. By the way, could have easily yes, been uh, that. an EDG <laughs> win. I mean, <clears throat> IG the the fact they won a game against top esports was pretty fraudulent. I mean, they lo they almost lost to LGD. They almost lost to EDG. They did lose to WE. I think IG. So this is one thing. This is a take that I had. I think IG is going to be one of the teams in competition with Weibo for that last playoff spot. Everyone sees LNG and they see that like LNG right now is three games behind IG, but LNG, I think will beat IG when they play against each other. That, that happens next week. So we'll see, but LNG has LGD, IG, EDG, AL, WE, RA left. That's what LNG has. Even if they do lose to WE and AL who are looking pretty legit, <laughs> I mean, they're still going to win probably four of those series and make it into playoffs. Whereas IG, if you look at IG's strength of schedule, they play against LNG, FPX, JDG, OMG, Weibo. I could see them actually losing every single match that they have left. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, IG almost lost yesterday to EDG. I think AL has been looking better than them. Um, FPX has been looking better than them. I think a lot of it comes down to that LNG IG series. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Weibo has a pretty hard strength of schedule um, coming up. And they are four and five right now. So they're only at four wins. And IG has a pretty hard strength of schedule too. I think WE, I think OMG will probably end up being fine as well. Because if you look at OMG's strength of schedule, OMG still plays against LGD, RNG, Ultra Prime. They have that match against IG. I think OMG is at least getting to eight wins. So the, the last playoff spot is between OMG, Weibo, IG in my mind. I think LNG will make it. It's always Fair sad enough. when you just talk about those bottom teams like, yeah, 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 yeah. those are wins. 
you know, and uh, to see like, uh, you know, I mean, it's not always like that, to be honest, like those could just not be wins, but right. I, I feels like they will be right now, at least. And that that's what I was saying, because you've pushed for the longest time and it's been proven true that anyone can be down on the LPL. Let's go watch like, you know, the lower end matches because, you know, those are the, you know, bare knuckle brawl like type of games but this year it kind of feels like there's a there's a larger separation from at least the top half in the i guess maybe there's like a top top 11 and bottom bottom six like in my mind in lpl there's top 11 and there's a bottom six tt ra lgd ultra prime uh rng edg i mean it's crazy to say that rng and edg might be the two worst teams in the league but that's right now how it looks (laughs) those are the bottom teams and then the top 11 is pretty competitive well, Invictus Game and making EDG look like uh, there's some life left in them after giving them a game win <laughs> yesterday. Uh, all right. Well, those are our top teams from around the world. That's why you watch this show, so that we can compare them. Uh, are we missing an elite team in there? Are you a G2 fanboy that wants us to talk about them and how they're elite? Mm, let us know in the comments, and maybe we'll do it next week. I find there are more G2 haters who just like to say that G2 is like not internationally competitive whatsoever. That's the weird thing is like G2 is clearly like at least somewhat internationally competitive, but people like to deny that that fact is a uh, reality. I would take G2 over any team that is lower than on what life and probably, I mean, I think that G2 could beat FPX, but I would take G2 over FPX, Dom one, KT, KDF. Yep, me too. And the rest of those teams in LPL like down. I just don't think that they can compete with like the top three LPL and the top two LCK. Top top three LCK as well, I'd say. I think Honda Life would probably just beat them. Um, well, there you have it. Let us know in the comments below on what what bubble matchup you'd like to see to get them into uh, the elite there. Uh, all right, guys. Another episode done and dusted. Uh, let's see. Is there anything that we missed that we needed to touch on? Uh hidden uh has been let go so excel hiring trick and Cass has now taken over excel does that does that excite you for the gigantes uh either one of you does it move the needle nope <laughs> nope there you go see chat i'm a man of the people you guys asked for it and that's all you get nope uh no azir azir bug uh kind of came up it was like invisible when you dash but now it's Azir has been disabled until they fix that, I guess. That's that's biggish. Like if it's, BD, if it's BDD for the rest and of... Casey Rolster and Shambles. Yeah, because Azir has been something that's been relatively picked. Mm, I think that's it. All right, Dom. Did you update us on passport drama? Are you leaving yet? Like, yeah, why I have my you passport? I have my passport now. You got it? Yep, finally. It was, what did you have to do? Did you have to go I mean, I and like... Wait. I just had to wait for it at this point. The lady yeah, like, I did, was I like, did all the bullshit, maybe if you yeah, give me a rub, it. young man, I'll get it. I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, I had to suck the guy's dick at the head of the, the um, <laughs> that's what Department I of State. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's how I got it. All right. Uh, so what are you heading out? Tomorrow, 7 a.m. Did you have to rebuy the flight again? Yep. I had to reschedule it three times, and it's it's been $1,000 each time. So minus 3K awesome. because of people lying to me, but it's fine. You know what? We'll just, we'll just do some advertisements and call it a day. There you go. You know, man, that, it gets expensive rebooking those first-class flights, man. Business class, not first class. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh... Monty, uh, what do you got coming up? Just uh, more streams and shows, as usual. What did you think of Avatar The Last Airbender live action? Uh, I thought it was decent, actually. I thought it was decent. It wasn't yeah. great, but it was pretty enjoyable, I thought. It was pretty enjoyable. Like a solid like six and a half to seven out of ten. Um, I, I was, I never saw, I'm too old for the animated series, so I hadn't watched it. So it was interesting talking to Doa on our show, Nerd Legion, about that stuff. It was all right. It was all right. 
I'm watching Constellation now, which is like actually quite good on Apple TV. Which one is that? Constellation. It is a very good like sci-fi thriller about a an astronaut on the International Space Station who starts to experience alternate realities. It's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, to uh, dive into more of that, you can head on over to our uh, Last Free Nation culture channel as Monty and uh, Doa dive into uh, uh, things. In yeah, music. I think we're going to do Dune. Dune is our next show. So there you oh, go. Okay. We'll talk about yeah. Dune. We'll talk about cool. Dune. We may talk about Shogun. We'll talk about Constellation. There's a bunch of stuff coming up. Awesome. Uh, yeah. For me, LCS interview is coming out. Uh, I did like 11 this week, uh, 12. So it was really cool to chat with. When, when are you going back to cast on on LCS again? I, yeah, I would love to do that. That would be great. Wouldn't it be great for... I think it would to, be great. I think I would, it would be great. LCS. Rafa clears. Get in line, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> I love Rafa. I love Rafa. Rafa had a tough series. Or had a one tough call. And, and like, no one's, he's not going to say this because he's an absolute stand up guy. Like, I, I, like the, 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 the swap of casters. I like Pope. Like, yeah, I, I didn't ask during my interview with Pope, but there was definitely something that happened where, you know, he's trying to play by play and they're like shuffling things around. So, like, when that yeah, stuff I, happened, I could, I could hear people talking to production in the background of that cast by the way well, i was listening to it on my screen i it, i don't know what i don't know what the fuck was going on but they were definitely like i could hear the other mics picking up other casters talking to production constantly throughout that cast there was some fucking weird shit that was happening yeah like i look i think i've given my sense to rafa as well it's like rafa you have such high highs call these fights man and he knows, and uh, he's. I think he's well equipped to be highly successful in the LCS. Not everyone's going to be Flowers. Not everyone's going to be Atlas. Let the guy figure out his personality when he casts. So uh, there it is, defending a fellow uh, caster. So just give, give give him some time. But yes, it would be great if I came back to the LCS too. I had a lot of fun, and I'm more than happy to do it again. Um, yeah, there you go. That's our weekly power spike for the day. Make sure to like and subscribe across all the platforms that you are enjoying our show. It helps us out greatly. Uh, oh, here's my last thing. I'm pushing to get Twitch partner. I'm now stating it, which means it's going to be embarrassing when I don't get it. But yeah, I would like to be God. Yes, help, help me. I'll do more. I'll do less gameplay and more just talking to camera. He'll if that works. The Department of State's dick, just like I had to. <laughs> More, you know what? At at this point, just help your boy out. So again, (laughs) give me the follows and you know, just idle while I'm streaming. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, We will come back next week for I guess playoffs for LCS. Who made it? Who didn't after the Super Week? And seeing uh, more LCK and LPL action. Uh, Until then, see you later.